we are not clear at this point whether they are successful or not. Or actually, we don't even know where they is heading for. Yes, you're totally right. Uh, not only just you know uh, their own uh, capability, even their intention is always has been kind of blurred. But I do think uh, they uh, still do have a kind of firm intention, and I guess their firm intention is um, estranging us. Here, us refers to uh, six party minus North Korea, which means again the South Korea, China, Japan, the United States, and Russia. They do know how differently we react to the uh, different uh, range of missiles. So I do think, I do guess, that, that's my only guess, mm -hmm. but I do guess they uh, want to, I mean, they, uh, they intend, again, the, the diversify uh, the, uh, the reactions from us that's right. the rest of there us. There are diversified mm -hmm. reactions, and I'm going to one, mention one of those, which might be coming from China, that is, or North Korea, that is, there are military exercises going on between South Korea and the United States, Mr. Walsh, according to Pyongyang, that is exactly what happened, and that is exactly what led to their test on missiles. Yeah, so I have, uh, let me offer, I don't know if it's true, but let me offer a very different way of thinking about this. Uh, every year, we have military exercises, and every year, North Korea does something in response to those missile uh, exercises, I mean, those uh, military exercises. And North Korea has been on this unbelievable testing pace. I mean, they're testing, they're testing, they're testing, you know, dozens every year. So the idea that they weren't, we're going to stop testing seems unlikely to me. We're having war games. They're going to do testing. Okay. But it may be, it may be that, that they have dialed it back a little, right? These were three short-range missiles. They're not ballistic missiles. They don't throw, pay, pay, uh, form the same sort of threats that other missiles were, they can't carry a nuclear warhead. So this allows them to test, that is to say, to respond to the military exercises, right. but turn it down a notch. And it may be, and I have no idea, that the U.S. military exercises turned it down a notch. And so both sides are doing what they normally do, but maybe at a little lower level to signal that we still want to be able to talk to each other and that possibilities still remain. Okay. That would be an alternative here, here, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. The real question, Ms. Ho. It's up to you to your answer. So, despite all of these things going on, the military exercises, South Korea, United States, and the North Koreans set three projectiles. We don't know exactly where it's heading for. Are they all dramas on the very surface? Be Side is drama, under it, there are real things going on? Or, actually, Ms. He, all these dramas are exactly all the things that are going on. What well, would you say? Yeah, on the surface, it's like a kind of drama. But beneath that, I think uh, both of the, the two sides that are testing the water, testing the bottom of line of those policy. Because we all know earlier this uh, the August, those two almost, you know, stand off and even threatening use the nuclear power. So from the DPRK, they're threatening targeting the Guam Island. And also from the U.S. perspective, mm. even uh, President Trump saying yeah, all the world we are going to see uh, unprecedented nuclear power. So this is a quite a very unprecedented, this kind of standoff. So I think that both of them, they're testing the water to see what is the right. bottom of this policy. Well, they are testing water. If you want to see how the waters are being tested, let's take a look at some of the timelines. August 26th, DPRK launched three short-range ballistic missiles. Two flew for 240 kilometers. One blew up almost instantly. And these particular missiles only threaten South Korea, according to the range. But Hua Song 14 missiles launched earlier this year have an estimated range of 10,000 kilometers, putting the U.S. heartland really at risk. Meanwhile, the U.S. has allowed South Korea to test Hyun Mu 2 missiles with the range of limit of 800 kilometers. So to balance the DPRK's growing nuclear and missile threat. So we see a lot of things going on all at the same time, which is the truth or relatively closer to the truth. Uh, Ms. Lim, your judgment also. Again, my uh, answer can remain pretty similar uh, with my previous answers. I do think uh, they do know how differently we react, mm. which means um, they want to show different or diverse uh, risk 
uh, occasionally or sometimes simultaneously to see our reactions. So the point is we, I mean the five party at least, we really have to have a strong consensus, firm consensus and we have to behave collectively. If we do show any different gaps between us, they will, that's what exactly I do think uh, Pyongyang uh, wants to see. Well, here's so the interesting thing. So in that sense, thing. I don't think they... Mm. Here's the interesting thing. I have to jump mm -hmm. in here, Ms. Lim. For example, China did not want to be kidnapped by Pyongyang. That's only fair, right? Nobody wants to be kidnapped by another country. But China does not want to be kidnapped by the interests of the United States or South Korea alone, either. And I guess the other way around, for South Korea, United States, to work one another with the other parties in the six-party talks. So the differences in opinions is obvious. But the thing is, through what kinds of mechanism, through what kinds of concerted efforts together can we build more trust? I think that is the crucial and the most crucial issue. So Ms. He, if on that point I could invite your views here, more tests, does it bring trust or does it bring distrust? Uh, of course, bring uh, the distrust because those uh, testing water issue, I think, uh, can further, you know, uh, make those gap between the mutual trust even wider uh, because nobody knows so which is the, the bottom. So you are constantly testing, testing, and then the, the bottom you haven't seen. Mm. So maybe as for, to the some point, maybe there will be some clash of those uh, uh, confrontation. So who knows? So a lot of people uh, just worry so much. If those uh, missile t uh, testing and somehow there is some mistake, so who can imagine? Uh, the South Korea, right. I think, is on the front line of uh, those uh, uh, will be the weak team. Well, South Korea will be, but the other parties are also likely to suffer diplomatically or in other ways as well. Uh, uh, Mr. Walsh, though, there is an interesting perspective about this. I mean, you see two earlier very severe and serious nuclear tests from the DPRK. According to the latest news coming from the South Korean side, the NCI, as they say, the Intelligence Service of South Korea, there's likely to be movements uh, suggesting a possible third test. Well, of course, at this point, nobody could, concern, could be confirming about that. And sometimes those intelligence were being used as a way for negotiation. We also know that. But the thing is, are parties prepared for if there were any nuclear test in the future. We are in the action, reaction, reaction, action mode. We all know that as well. So, yes. Yes. what's next, Mr. Walsh? Well, I, I think you put your finger on something important, and that is we often pay attention to what Korea, North Korea does uh, rather than paying attention to what it doesn't do. And they haven't had a nuclear test, and most of us would say that they've been ready to have one that is technically prepared to have one since, I don't know, March. And we're expecting uh, a test at least on two previous occasions when there were major North Korean holidays. So the fact that they haven't tested, I take as a sign of restraint. And so if you take that as a sign of restraint, and maybe this missile test, which is sort of low level, short range projectiles, maybe that's a hint at mm. restraint. And then, then you can begin to build some momentum. But one of the issues here is both sides, as I say, the U.S. and South Korea and North Korea, they both have uh, two, two faced policies in, in the sense that they uh, or two track policies. They both want to appear very strong and run military exercises and, you know, right. show their military might at the same time that they're also at least I think behind the scenes, certainly in the U.S. side and the, at the New York Channel. They seem to be engaging in some some dialogues, some, some very quiet dialogue. Right. So I think you have both a sort of aggressiveness and and a deterrent signal and a let's talk signal, and that can be confusing to us who are watching from the outside. Well, I guess you'd be less confused than us because Boston is really not that far from New York, Mr. Walsh. I really have to know some information from you <laughs> as to what exactly is going on there in New York. Do you know any more information than we already talked about? Well, it has been confirmed in the press that jo Ambassador Joe Yoon has been talking with the North Koreans for some time. We know that they used diplomacy to remove Otto Wambier, uh, who was the American being detained there. Mm -hmm. And those talks have continued. And you had over the weekend Secretary Tillerson, uh, whose comments have really evolved over time. 
Uh, you have Secretary Tillerson emphasizing peaceful resolution to the issue uh, and use of diplomacy. Uh, he, by diplomacy, in this case, he means sanctions and pressure. But in any case, he emphasized the word peaceful in his description of the U.S. policy. Right. So I do think there's been some movement, and much of it is, is behind the scenes. Uh, but I haven't been sitting in on those meetings. Right. Ms. Lim, actually, it's not just Secretary Tillerson. It's also the U.S. military officials in the Pacific region that have been talking about peaceful solutions, not through military means, not long for ago. So are we seeing signs of both sides trying to calm down the water, at least for now, and allow just a window opportunity, as slight as we could have, at this point for some talks. Are we really seeing the first light of the tunnel? Um, compared to um, two, three weeks uh, ago, I mean, the, we really did see a, a kind of high tensions, verbal tensions between the Washington and the uh, Pyongyang. Compared to those moments, of course, it looks like uh, it has come down. But underneath the uh, surface, probably the fundamental momentum didn't dis disappear or didn't change that, that mm -hmm. much, uh, which means we always do have this kind of you know, potential risk. So probably, again, of course, I can't agree more I mean, the, with the, uh, Mr. Uh, Wash. Uh, we, at some point, we really need to have, uh, have a dialogue fully I mean, with the, uh, Pyongyang. But again, I uh, want to really uh, suggest I mean, mm. the, 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 the other, the rest of us really have to have a consensus us uh, before again the Pyongyang um, and Washington or whoever uh, or even six Ms. Lim, you keep on talking about too, consensus yes, uh -huh. you keep on mm -hmm. talking about consensus but mm -hmm. it's not easy especially after what have all happened there were tests coming from DPRK oh. at any time that could be possible missiles projectiles and could be even nuclear and we don't know what the reaction is going to be oh. from all sides secondly you also got a lot of things going on between mm -hmm. even China and South Korea the sad uh, deployment, for example, China and Russia see as a permanent threat to these two countries. When you say we have to have a consensus, where does the consensus come from if those difficulties are not being solved? Ms. Lim. Of course it's not easy. Of course it's not easy. Consensus building, even domestic consensus building, is not easy in any country. But that is why we need to have a, a, you know, dialogues before actually we open up uh, the dialogue to Pyongyang. I mean, the, between us, I mean, we really do have to uh, have uh, more dialogues and more communications, I mean, the, to build a consensus. It's a kind of procedural thing. It's not a, you know, I don't think it's a one-click magical, uh, magical process. Uh -huh. So in that sense, I really want want to see the uh, Chinese leadership here or uh, U.S. American leadership here, I really truly hope, I mean, that my new administration, South Korean new administration, can have a uh, uh, initiative too. But as long as we do enjoy this economic prosperity and the freedom okay. here in the rest of us, I mean, the, of the, our countries, I think we really have to uh, deal with this, I mean, more seriously. Ms. Ho, mm -hmm. here in China, has China demonstrated the leadership as the Ms was expecting. It seems that China has joined the sanctions. China has been calling on all parties, calm down, please don't try to bring it to another higher notch, the tensions. Has China demonstrated its leadership? What is leadership to you, Ms. He? Uh, of course, I think China has been always serving this kind of uh, mediation role. This is a kind of leadership because our colleagues mentioned this uh, consensus, you know, the consensus building. Mm. But the consensus building, of course, needs a table that's a negotiation table. So this negotiation table, China has been offered a long, long time ago. That is six-party talks. But unfortunately, these six-party talks uh, hasn't uh, generated a good results because of those uh, trust, mutual trust that hasn't been built on. Right. Because those uh, uh, mutual testing water issue, I think, has been, uh, you know, uh, up, uh, uh, you know, upgraded those level of both those arm race, and then we see those bad consequences right. has been show up one by one. The sad deployment in South Korea, and also this testing also make this North Korea's their uh, you know missile building now becoming more capable than before. And also from the U.S. side, uh, they joined together with South Korea and then make those uh, joint uh, drill also uh, upgraded 
one by one. So I think right now China's leadership shows another way. That is the idea now we put forward. It's called a double suspension. Mm -hmm. So one suspension is those joint military drill should be should be hot, should be suspended, and also we can push the North Korea also you know suspended their missile test. That's right. You know what? At the very beginning, double suspension it has not been reported in any other country rather than China, and toward today. We are hearing enormous amount of reporting in South Korea and in the United States as well through public networks and even some of the networks uh, that are quite hot these days on social media talking about double suspension. What does it really mean, Ms. Walsh? Uh, are we, all parties, getting ever closer to a consensus about that? There has to be some carrots and sticks together. It cannot be just sticks all the time. So Ms. Walsh, you have to help us find a way. Where is the central point to you? Well, I'm doing the best I can. Thank oh, you. please. Um, that's a joke. Oh, well, come the, on. Uh, the, um, you know, I, I think the consensus, I think there is, part, uh, I agree with my colleagues that, that it, it'll, diplomacy will work best if everyone's on the same page. Now, that doesn't mean we're all going to have the same identical views because we don't have the same interests. So we're going to disagree about some things, but the question is whether you can still agree about the core. Mm. And it seems to me that China's core policy here is denuclearization, which they've been quite public and quite direct about. Right. And that is the policy of the United States, denuclearization. And it's the policy of uh, China, I mean, of uh, Japan and South Korea. So I think there is uh, some... Uh, uh, consensus there. I think as tensions rose, especially three weeks ago, okay. and people started to get really, really nervous, then uh, the, the, the paradox is the more dangerous things become, the more people uh, try harder for a peaceful resolution. All I right. think we, what we're going to have to do is wait for the conclusion of these exercises and then see if, if, if things pick up with momentum with the conclusion of these military exercises. Oh, is that really what we're facing right now? Ms. Ke, final words from you very briefly, one sentence or two. Yeah, I think, uh, of course, the interests are share the same thing, denuclearization. But mm. the process maybe now is different. Okay. Some are saying using the war as a threat weapon. Some are saying the negotiation should be the right uh, access. All right. Ms. Lin, one sentence for you as well. Again, I think uh, we can t work together, definitely. Uh, the more important thing is how strong a will we do have.